Salutations. So today I would like to focus on a very important thing, namely the art of memory. Now let us remember that in the Eleusinian mysteries and the Orphic tablets, memory was crucial. Aletheia and forgetfulness was alike to heroization. So the memory is always crucial for operational magic. Because if you forget about your tools, if your memories got erased and disappear with the bright arising of the sun in the morning when you wake up, then you are as good as crossed out of any proper gaining of knowledge or operational magic. A magician that forgets about his tools, about his knowledge, is no longer a magician. He is another person that carries on with his life blindly. And why is it so that this is a battle? Because those in oblivion, those that are ignorant, those that do not have real potential and do not know about the Ars Magica and Ars Memorativa, are left alone to carry on with their lives unworried. Now the real trouble starts when you are potent magically, you know, you have the knowledge, you have the skills and you have the toolkit, then the battle really begins for survival. And if you want an easy life, you can atheize yourself, convert to Christian lies and so on, and live your life unworried and then die as a slave with your soul enslaved. However, for those of you who refuse such a fate and dare to act, memorize and express their magic and act upon the fabric of mind, souls, hearts and other beings and entities all in a greater order and it is not a religious order, it is irreligious and magic is a bit of a metaphysical anarchism in essence, it is abolishing all religious indoctrination. It is a way of liberation. Because when you meet the gods halfway, you realize that all the religious Judeo-Christian crap is a bunch of lies. And then you start walking directly with the gods, with the entities and the spirits, ignoring this religion, religious detritus. So, Ars Memorativa, Methods in Magic 11. This is a chapter from Methods and Theories of Magic. The very evil that wants to deprive us of true, beautiful, just, good and right memories accordant with Aletheia is the very evil that masters us through deceit, ignorance, stupidity, blindness and indoctrination. It hinders the acquisition of true memories that resonate with realizations and hard-won skills and sports false ones, ruining our walks. It makes us forget what is true and splendid and makes us remember what is false, commanding our minds and hearts to the dictate of that ugly crone, forgetfulness, and that malicious and envious grey bird, delusion. May Mnemosyne stand triumphant. Now this is a fragment and a citation. You will find in the halls of Hades a spring on the left and standing by it a glowing white cypress tree. Do not approach this spring at all. You will find the other from the lake of memory, refreshing water flowing forth. But guardians are nearby. Say, I am the child of earth and study heavens, but my race is heavenly, and this you know yourselves. But I am parched with thirst and I perish, but give me quickly refreshing water flowing forth from the lake of memory. And then they will give you to drink from the divine spring, and then you will celebrate the rites with the heroes. This is the memory when you are about to die. Write this upon your soul and heart. Gold tablet from Turi, Orphic gold tablets and Greek religion, further along the path. This is published by Cambridge University Press and you will find plenty of examples of such gold tablets in this book. Now, today not many of us have the proper focus, duration of concentration, time and resources to train in the Renaissance Ars Memorativa as propagated by, for example, Giordano Bruno. For more information on the history of the art of memory, I would recommend Francis Yates, The Art of Memory. 
The imagination of many people is weakened by weapons of mass destruction and a constant replacement of the fantastic on the imagination with pop culture stimuli and other superficial things that can hardly be called an adornment of their minds, hearts, souls, diamonds and genius. How can we save our memories? How can we maintain them? After all, they are the key to maintaining the arsenal, performance and defense of any walking magician. Without memory, we forget our tools, our purpose, our vision and ourselves. Without memory, we become prisoners of the present and the beauties of the ethereal worlds elude our perception and our eyes. Lest we forget, there are many plans aimed at depriving people, and especially the Magoi, of their operative memory, which is crucial for the maintenance of their work. Sometimes this is associated with indoctrination, because a person without memory is easy to influence and brainwash with the most heinous of deceptions. Let us remember that in the Orphic Mysteries, Aletheia, the truth is synonymous with non-forgetfulness, Alete. It is the heroic souls who remember the immortal and divine worlds and never give up to the, their revelations, epiphanies, apocalypses, unveiling of the treasuries of the goddess Isis, the joy of the true philosophers. How can we remember? We can make notes in space, on objects, notes inscribed on our thoughts, our soul, our mental, emotional fields, creating a whole network of memory notes that we can recall when necessary. To remember everything at once is an impossibility in mortal life. I just had to exercise something. It would be a curse. This blessing comes with death and immortality, embodiment, if our Herculean ways lead to this total memory, then we are in truth in possession of all our universal memories surpassing our single earthly life. When this gift is bestowed upon us by gods and goddesses. And yet in life, in order to progress in the alchemical tolls and walk in homoiosis Theo and Theon Ergon, we must create our own mnemonic web and masterfully weave it so that none of it can be torn, none of it unwoven. Here we play the spinners of destinies resembling the Moires. It is the fates of our memory that we weave together, big on Christian pig, and maintain to make battle of the Tersian, Tersus, splendor. Short is the memory of mankind, short the memory of the masses mercilessly exploited by their masters, short the memory of the masters and the history of their elevation, short is the memory of the horrors and miseries of their history. Shards of the dead cut the echo of long-lost events. Even the living confuse their long-lost loves with events that no longer captivate their heart. Perhaps it is better that way. For total recollection in immortal life is total horror. To relate all memories with their emotional burden to a single point in life is a terrible ceremony of the best and worst. The deeper the life lived, the deeper the life we lived, the nobler the pains and raptures, the greater the dangers of crossing the threshold of what is bearable for a mortal. Do not let me use double standards here if I think that it is better not to remember for some people, because the experience should be dissolved in the fusion of pain and awe, of overcame sufferings and joys, to find the wisdom in the moderate understanding. Now back to the topic. Memories and occult understanding are synergistic information in an entropic syntony held in a topological space that are places in a spatio-temporal continuum with all the traits attached to it, dimensional, ontological, magical, etc. Memories are also a hierarchy of recent events distributed in consciousness and in memory of the mind, both as ghosts of the mental sphere, processed by the brain in short and long-term memories in the hypocamp, but retrievable from the matching astral spheres and not just distributed in the brain and the neural networks. Think of how difficult it is to remember what we did yesterday at 1.33 p.m. What was our thought, emotion, feeling, mindset, worldview? What did the jumping monkey of our mind come up with? What state were we in? It is much easier to grasp the place we were in, the place we were talking to, what we were seeing, than what we were thinking about. Depending on our aptitude for certain senses, including the extrasensory ones, or the senses that go beyond the accepted ones, but retain the quality of senses as interfaces with reality, we can remember sounds, visions, sense, smells, abstract ideas, force fields, energy spheres, magnetic phenomena, signs of entities, their seagulls, their signs and symbols. 
Someone with a photographic memory and developed astral vision with second sight will find it easier to remember landscapes than thoughts or sounds. But the point is to master all synergistic imprints to the point where we remember not only what we focused on, but all environments and stimuli that we can reconstruct from scratch. With training comes mastery, master the craft and everything else will follow. The first idea is remembering, the Aristotelian method of remembering. We put a hook, an engram or a quartz condensed experience in our memory at a certain time and place. And then recall a few hours later what the hook contained, the places, the sounds, the chatter, the thoughts, all of it. The hook works like an astral node and is a mnemonic device filtered through a particular perspective or reality tunnel. And any event can be viewed from many perspectives and often it sheds more light on different models to extract more valid information that can be used to develop better magical tools. We cannot remember everything at once, so we have to consciously and selectively choose what to take in and remember. Here the guide is both ethos and aesthetics, what is useful and what is superficial, what helps our development and what hinders it, what good is it to remember that a dog barked in the park. But it is useful to remember that a garden spirit acknowledged our presence. It is useful to remember that we met our great love in such and such a place. It is useful to remember that a certain ceremony was performed there and then. We should remember not only important things, but also useful things. If you clutter your mind with dull or foolish knowledge and gossip, it does not pave the way to excellence. So we go about binding spatio-temporal memories in this way. And by binding, we narrow down the search criteria when we need to remember something. We can leave astral notes around people, places and objects, make them float in the air. Some undead shadow witches write on the living skin of people to communicate precise information through our faults to the shadows and the dead. The language of shadows and gestures is a separate chapter. In this way, information can be gathered or left behind. Notes are a form of magical mnemonics that we can use to remember important things about certain places and events. We can even leave notes in imaginary realities, dimensions, realities and places if we choose to do so. In secret, I tell you that I call upon the goddess Nemozine to preserve all my memories, both earthly and unearthly, and that in a secret place, a field, a temple in the stars, I make backups of my earthly memories, well encrypted and secured so that no outsider can access them. Methods to encrypt and cloak are in the next chapter. Thank you. Have a great night.